everyone and welcome back to crochet tutorials in this video we are going to make one of these gorgeous little amigurumi hearts please don't be disheartened when i say amigurumi if you've never tried it before this is a fantastic first project it's really simple probably only take about half an hour 35 40 minutes maybe um, and once you have finished this project you will be completely across all of the basic techniques for amigurumi so they are how can you not love them they're gorgeous little hearts of course it's valentine's day coming up so they are a fantastic little valentine's day project an excellent thing about them is that they don't take up much yarn so you can use up your scraps with these little guys um, they are so very tactile. Of course, if you are extraordinarily creative, you might find other ways other than just, you know, a plain heart to present them to someone. You might uh, attach them all along a garland or um, pop them, two of them or more, into a box frame uh, with a wedding photo or, or something like that. Um, you might... In fact, before you close it, you might insert a stick in there and make a little magic wand for a granddaughter. The ideas are obviously limitless and only bounded by your creativity. So feel free to knock yourself out. You're probably going to want to make more than one once you've made one. So I just I have these in front of me because I wanted to just chat with you about the difference in yarns and how they end up with amigurumi. A lot of um, patterns will actually call for 100% cotton. And this one in the middle has been made with 100% Aran cotton. It's the paint box Aran cotton. Um, it's a gorgeous yarn, cotton yarn to use for amigurumi. And I use it for a lot of amigurumi. Um, the others have been made all with acrylic yarns or acrylic blends in this case. And they are... A lot stretchier you know the cotton will not stretch as much as the acrylic yarns will um, and you know certainly that matters when you go to stuff um, and when you're you know making a particular shape it matters whether or not it holds that shape doesn't mean you can't use acrylic obviously um, because you know quite successfully people do and it just means that you need to be a little bit more mindful they're different sizes. You may be surprised to know that these are all exactly the same. They are all made using exactly the same number of stitches and the same number of rows. The only difference is the hook size that I've used and the yarn itself. So these two, the red and this gorgeous little pink one up the top that has the sweetest little sparkle through it, um, they were made using eight ply and you can even see that the red is slightly bigger than the pink and that's because this one is a baby yarn and it just is a finer yarn so this is just a bog standard um, eight ply and they end up with a smaller piece than even going with the same stitch count it's a smaller piece this one's our next smallest and that is the cotton aran and these ones were made using a worsted weight acrylic yarn or in this one's an acrylic blend um, but you know they are a much larger piece and worsted weight yarns are fantastic for amigurumi because you can make a bigger piece with the same number of stitches and it has more of an impact so you know certainly your choice of yarn obviously is dictated by your stash use up your scraps for these but be mindful that if you're using eight ply you're going to end up with a smaller heart and if you're using a uh, worsted weight yarn it's going to be slightly bigger you are going to need some fiber fill for these because they're stuffed uh, and you can use just the off-the-shelf fiber fill which is lovely um, some people use the stuffing out of old pillows that have come to the end of their life and that's fantastic reuse for the item wash them of course and then reuse that stuffing in your amigurumi beautiful the other thing you can use is these little scraps of yarn that we get from cutting off tails from our projects 
and it can be a little bit uh, a bit of a pain to save them I guess but if you save them um, you know it does take a few but you can stuff small projects with them so actually this one um, all these pieces were from a pom-pom I made that went wrong so sometimes things that go wrong are a blessing they are fantastic to use absolutely lovely to use this one has been stuffed with um, offcuts and it's so soft it's just lovely whereas these are a little bit firmer because they're stuffed with the fiber fill um, and probably because you can compress the fiber fill more tend to put more in which is i should say um, something that you never do with amigurumi do not overstuff because if you overstuff you'll spread these stitches out and you'll be able to see the fiber fill or whatever your filling is through there so otherwise we will need hooks oh hooks i should mention that with these bigger guys and the worsted weight yarn which is essentially a 10 ply i used a four and a half mil hook um, and i'll be using a four and a half mil hook and a worsted weight yarn for the demonstration today um, <coughs> excuse me for these other small ones in the eight ply i used a four mil hook you don't want to go much over that. You might use a 5 mil hook with your 8 ply in your general crocheting, um, but don't go much over the 4 mil because your holes will become quite large. You can go down if you wanted to go to a 3.5 or even a 3 mil hook, you can. Um, but just bear in mind that you do need to crochet emigurumi fairly tight so the, the holes remain quite closed. And you can have a bit of a struggle, if your hook's quite small, to get into that space if you're using, you know, a, a hook that's smaller than your yarn. But that's about it. Stitch markers are essential for amigurumi. So get yourself some stitch markers. If you don't have any, it's no big deal. You can use a paper clip or something, but you need to be able to hook this through your stitch um, and let it hang there while you crochet the rest of that round you're going to need a darning needle to darn in your ends and your trusty pair of scissors but that is about it so i do hope you join me in making these gorgeous little hearts and we'll get started all righty before we get started i should say a couple of things Amigurumi is generally worked in continuous rounds. Um, that is why we have the stitch markers. Continuous rounds are simply that you don't slip stitch at the end of the round. You go and work your next stitch straight in. Um, and it does make it difficult to see where your round begins and ends, which has the added bonus for the piece that you can't see any lines on, well, aside from the vertical lines, on that piece. Um, it is a lot neater, and it certainly is the way um, most amigurumi patterns are written. So definitely have your stitch marker or your paper clip, if you have a paper clip or whatever. Um, it's just something to mark that stitch. The piece is actually constructed in two pieces. So we've got this top lobe and then this lobe, and we are going to join those together and then crochet the rest of the body down in decreasing rows until we get to the final little point here at the bottom of the heart so you know you will find that it does get a little bit trickier as you get right to the tip here but it's okay it's really doable i am using a worsted weight acrylic yarn in blue hopefully that will enable you to see the stitches easier um, and a four and a half millimeter hook the whole thing is co constructed with a magic ring and single crochet there are four four i think i was going to say some but there are four slip stitches in the middle when we join our heart together so really really easy if you don't know how to do a single crochet which is a double crochet in the uk terminology if you don't know, then feel free to have a look at my beginners, absolute beginners tutorial. I'll link that in the description box. Um, and also there's a tutorial for the magic ring, but I will show you right now. 
The magic ring is really simple and really handy. Um, just lay the tail across your three fingers like that and then hang on to it and wrap it around the front of your fingers and then bring it back up and over to form that X on the front of your hand. So we're just wrapping it around the front of those fingers, bringing it up and back over to form that X. And you grab your hook and go in under that strand and grab that piece of yarn, twist up and then grab that piece of yarn again and bring it through the loop. And that is your magic ring. Now you can pull on the tail to make it a little bit smaller if that makes it more comfortable to crochet into. For the first round, we're going to crochet six single crochets into this ring. So one, two, three, four, five, and six and then just hang on to that last stitch you made and pull on the tail and it'll close this circle nicely and you need to tug it a bit firmly um, and it'll close it completely as you can see there so that's the first round six stitches one two three four five six for the next round, we're actually going to increase into every stitch. So that means that we're going to be putting two single crochets into each stitch for a total of 12 stitches in the round. So this first one can be a little bit tricky to get into, but don't let it deny you. Holy moly, this one is being tricky um, in there here we go um, and so 12 stitches now this is where your oh, this is where your stitch marker starts its journey around your piece just mark that first stitch and then continue around so if you put two stitches into every stitch, you won't need to count while you're doing it, um, unless you want to, of course. Your goal is 12. I generally, though, count at the end of the round because you know very well that you'll be counting and a kid or a partner or a pet We'll always find some way to distract us from our counting. So whatever I can do to not have to count continuously, I do. All right, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Beautiful. All right, so the next round, we're going to be... You can take out that stitch marker for now. We're going to be putting or increasing every second stitch. So that means that we will put one stitch in one single crochet, cro holy moly, one single crochet in the first stitch and then two single crochets into the second. Apparently it's my second stitch that's being problematic now. So one and two. Now I know that I've just done three stitches, so I'm going to count back three stitches, and that is my first stitch and the spot for the stitch marker. All right, so if I go around now, making sure that I put two stitches into every second stitch, I'll have 18 stitches at the end of this round. What I tend to do is just count one, two, three, um, and know that two and three need to go into the same stitch. So whatever way you keep track of your increases um, is up to you. You can count to 18. Uh, 
All right. All right, so that is round three. Now round rounds four, five, six, and seven are actually stitch counts of 18. So they are the same. We're going to take this from being a flat circle into being a little cup that is the top of that heart. So take out the stitch marker. One... Two. We are just going to put your stitch marker back in. We're just going to crochet one single crochet into every stitch. Three. Four. Five. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 17 and 18 so that is our first round and you'll see that it starts to turn up into a cup shape and soon we'll be crocheting into the side with it sitting kind of like that um, but again this is the second round of a stitch count of 18. One single crochet into every stitch. Don't leave me now, stitch marker. Um, three, four. Uh-oh. That's four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Now you can see that that cup shape, I pulled that stitch through, you can see that that cup shape is um developing quite nicely and when you do your next two rounds it'll be significantly bigger but i won't make you watch me crochet and listen to me count um, feel free to make your next two rounds of one stitch in each stitch one single crochet in each stitch for a total of 18 stitches in that round and I'll meet you back here after the next two. All right, so you should have something that looks like this. It has seven rounds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven rounds, and there should be 18 stitches in that round. And once you have seven rounds of 18 stitches, pop your tail inside and take the stitch marker out and just tie it off you don't need a long tail on this you really just that was a bit too long you really just need to make a knot 
because we need to make one more lobe for our heart. So put that one aside and start making your second. Now obviously I'm not going to expect you to watch me make my second, um, but remember it is six into the magic circle six single crochets or double crochets in the UK terminology into that magic circle. The second round you increase every stitch so two single crochets into each stitch in the second round. What have I got there? One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and then for a total of 12 stitches in your second round and then your third round, you increase every second stitch for a total of 18. Do not forget to use your stitch marker or you'll be undoing it in frustration. Um, but I'll meet you back with the second completed piece. Keep that, that second one, on your hook. Don't cut it off. Keep your second one on your hook and I'll see you back here. Okay, so by this stage you should have these two pieces. This is the one we made earlier and this is the one we've just made which is still firmly attached to the hook. There should be seven rounds and you can count them by looking at the base. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven rounds and 18 stitches around for both of them. Now we can take out the stitch marker and for this what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to work into the wrong side of this piece initially. So just give yourself a little bit of leeway on this hook because you're going to be slip stitching these two pieces together like that and you know, you're going to need a, a little bit of a loop on that hook. Not a massive one, but a little one. Won't matter if it's big. Um, so we're going to go in to that last stitch we made. So that's the last stitch in our round. And we're going to go in from the wrong side. And then we're going to come in to the second last stitch on the previous piece that we made. So this stitch right here. And just insert your hook into that, bring up your yarn and slip that through there and through the loop on your hook. It can be a little bit tricky, so if you don't get it straight away, it is no big deal. Just persevere until you get it. That's why I said just have a little bit of slack on that loop on your hook. And then we're going to go into the very next stitch. We're going to join this together with four slip stitches and we're going to go into the last stitch that we made here. The reason we go into the second last stitch first is just because this last stitch is the one we've tied off. So if any stitch on all of this is going to come loose, it is that one that we've tied off. It won't, but if any did, it would be that one. So we're just going to place that in the middle of our four slip stitches to join. So we're going to yarn over again and just slip stitch through there. And again, the next stitch along slip stitch is this one. Slip stitch that one. And our final, you see those, those stitches line up anyway. They're fairly easy to identify which one you need to go through. So that is our two pieces joined. Now for the rest of these rounds, we're going to ignore all four of those stitches. They don't exist anymore. And what we've now got is instead of um, two rounds of 18, we have two rounds of 14 stitches, which is a total of 28 stitches. So what we need to do is go into, you can see that this stitch here is the one that we've just slip stitched into. So we need to crochet into this one next. But we're going to chain one and go into that stitch 
and single crochet. And then we're going to single crochet all the way around until we get to here. We're going to single crochet all the way around until we get to this point. And that should be 14 um, stitches. Now, just let me do, I like to do three stitches and then put in my stitch marker. That's my thing. You might do two or you might do one, but I do three so I know exactly where I'm at. Pop in your stitch marker and then we'll count around. So we've done one, two, three stitches. We need 14 on this side. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten, eleven, oh, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. Now this next side can be really tricky. So what I generally do, and it's a good hint for you, is I go around and think, well, if I go into this stitch here, that one, how many stitches will that give me? So I'll just take out my hook. If I go in here, which is that one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So this is the stitch we want to go into because we want fourteen stitches on each side. So just pop straight over, don't worry about chaining one and single crochet. And then continue around with single crochet one into each stitch. So what's that for? and 14. Now in between there is the stitch that we slip stitched so we're going to ignore that stitch and this stitch marker is marking our first stitch. So for the next round we're actually just going to do a straight round of 28 stitches around that whole figure. So we just pop straight over into that one and that's one three, pop the stitch marker in, and continue till there is 28 stitches. That's five. Fourteen, and then let me just check. Is that a stitch? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 
13, 14, yes it is. So that one there needs to be gone into. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. And fourteen. Now that is our 28 stitches on that round. So I'm going to say if you end up with 29, um, don't panic. Don't undo it and think, oh my goodness, unless you, you know, a died in the wool perfectionist, don't panic. You're not going to throw everything off with one stitch. Um, it is best to have the correct amount of stitches because obviously the decrease that we're going to start doing now is it, it is best if it's even. But one stitch isn't going to throw out that evenness, so don't panic at all. Um, all right, so what we are going to do is decrease. And we're going to decrease for the rest of the, the piece, actually. Um, so firstly we're going to crochet, single crochet five and then decrease. So, and that we'll, we'll do that four times around this, tw tw the 28 stitches. So that's one, two, three, pop your stitch marker back in. four and five and then decrease and the way we decrease um, it, it's an invisible decrease that we're going to use is just pop your hook into the front loop of that next stitch so just through the front loop and then we need to go into the front loop again hope you can see that there the front loop again of the following stitch and how I tend to do it is just turn my hook slightly and use the actual hook to grab that front loop and you can see that I've got the three loops on my hook there. Grab the yarn and go through those two loops and then yarn over again and go through that to make that one single crochet. So then we ignore the slip, the, the stitches that we just worked into and we single crochet five again. Remember we're going to do this four times. Three, four and five and then we decrease again. So into the front loop only and into the front loop only of the next stitch and yarn over pull through those two yarn over and pull through those and then we go across here one two Three, four, five, and decrease front loop only and front loop only. Yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through, and then uh, 
I missed a stitch. So I'm taking it out. This is my decrease here. Oh, hang on, I've got to go past that decrease. It happens because you can't necessarily see which is a stitch and which isn't. So this was my decrease, so I'm going to go back to that decrease. And, and then this is a stitch. Two, three, four, five, and decrease. Front loop only, front loop only. And then one, two, three, four, and five, and then decrease again. So front loop only, oh. Front loop only, get in there, and front loop only. Now you'll remember that I did say one stitch isn't going to matter. And realistically, I could have just gone on and left that skip stitch there, but it probably would have made a little hole, and I don't really like that. So it is worth making sure that you do have the right stitch count. Um, you know, it's one of those things that counting ahead does tend to save you a little bit of time. So we've done that round. That was the five decrease round. Now we're going to do a four decrease round. And it is exactly the same thing. But instead of crocheting five single crochets and then decreasing, we're going to crochet four single crochets and then decrease. So that's three. Pop in my stitch marker and then four and then decrease. So front loop only, front loop only, pull through and single crochet. One, two. Three, four, decrease, one, two, three, Four, decrease. One. Two. Now I'm pretty sure you can figure out what the next round's going to be, but if you can't, if you haven't been paying attention or you'd just like me to tell you anyway, it is three single crochets and then the decrease. So one, two, three, which is my magic number to tell me to put my stitch marker in. And then we decrease. So front loop only, front loop only, decrease. One, two, three, 
front lip only, front lip only, and decrease. Marker getting in the way. Front loop only. Front loop only. Decrease. All right. Now at this point, we're going to need to to look at filling it. So, whatever you've got for your fill, let me just zoom out again. Whatever you've got for your fill, now's the time to bring it into action. I'm going to use some fiber fill. Um, I've got a whole heap here, um, and just stuff it in to the piece. And you kind of you don't want to pack it too tight, but you want to pack it fairly firmly. Um, they can be if this is your first amigurumi, they can definitely um, be too floppy, but they can also be too tight. So it's a little bit of a balance. You don't want it spreading these holes and I guess that's your biggest indicator so if you watch your holes while you're doing it um, if they're still fairly compact and tight together then you're going to be absolutely fine at this point um, there's not many opportunities left to put any more fill in so I would if anything overfill it just a tiny amount um, so I'm going to put a little bit extra in now, even though it's looking like it's pretty chock-a-block full. Um, because when we um, do the, the bottom of that heart, um, we can just scooch that fibre fill back over into that particular heart, part of the heart and it'll be absolutely fine. But at this stage, if we just overfill it a tiny bit, although I might have gone a little bit overboard there, um, it will make sure we've got enough available fibre fill for the rest of the heart. So from here, things do get a lot tighter in your crocheting. And you'll see what I mean. So we're back in. We can take Mr. Stitch Marker out again. Now we just did the three and decrease and now we're going to do two and decrease so one two three and you might notice that I yank pretty hard on this and that's to close it essentially and to keep these holes nice and tight um, we want those holes fairly uniform across the whole piece but we want them quite tight so every time I do um, a stitch I, I do fairly yank on it and do our decrease and then and decrease then one two and decrease
two and decrease. Sometimes you do have to look twice at what stitch you're actually going into in this stage and that is perfectly fine. It's better to be safe than stop than sorry. And look, I've, looks like I've got one stitch left over, which is okay. Just pop in a single crochet. If you're in that position, just pop in a single crochet. Clearly what I did at some stage in that round was actually went into a decrease stitch, which meant that I effectively didn't do that decrease then. It's no big deal. I'm not going to go back and redo it. It's not going to harm my heart in any way. So this next round is actually a single crochet decrease, single crochet decrease across the whole round. So you can choose whether or not to put your stitch marker in again. I'm not going to, um, but you go into that first stitch, single crochet, then in your next two stitches, do your decrease. And we're going to do that around. So into the next stitch, single crochet, and decrease decrease in the next two single crochet in the following stitch and decrease. We know from our repetitions in the previous rounds that it's five decreases, uh, sorry, four decreases to the round. So this is my third and that puts me back in that um, position where my stitch marker would have been, which is why I don't I know that I don't need the stitch marker here. doing the last decrease. Now you're kind of left with this hole here and but as you can see it's and probably feel yourself it's a little bit of a battle to get in there to do it. So what we're going to do is actually the non-invisible decrease it's just the normal decrease. So pop your hook into that next stitch and bring the loop through and then go straight into the next stitch and again, bring another loop through. With three loops on the hook, like you were doing a half double crochet, go through all three loops on those, that hook. Then go around, find your next stitch. And at this stage, it's whatever stitch you can get in, really. Um, bring the yarn through into the next stitch. And... You're being difficult. And go into the next stitch. Where are you? Okay. So this, I think, is telling me that potentially it's going to be too difficult. What you can do is just tie off with a long tail. Tie off with a long tail. Give it a decent tail and cut that. We still have a tiny hole here. Uh, it's too difficult to get in with the with the hook. So just thread your needle and close that with your needle. And it's a heart. Um, essentially, you would have to close it, whatever you did, even if you did manage to do one more half double decrease, half double crochet type decrease. Um, however, it doesn't it doesn't matter. In fact, once you stop with the um, single crochet decreases, you can go directly to this. Um, 
method of closing with the needle. It doesn't make the heart so pointy, um, as you can see, but it is still the heart. So once you've done that and you've closed it all nicely, look for a place to make a little knot. And we need to just, well, that's it, we need to just get in there and actually do a decent knot on the bottom of this. So pull it tight. And then all we do is pass this needle back up into the body of the heart all the way through. You want to try and, and stick as close to the outside as you possibly can. Otherwise, what you'll end up doing is grabbing a needle tip full of fibre fill and pushing it out a hole, and you don't want to do that. So stick as close to this as you can and just bring that through and cut off. And a little tip that's really, really good for amigurumi generally is have a look at your piece. And if you've got any holes um, that you think, oh, that's a bit big, I don't really like that. And especially if you're using a darker color, it's kind of okay with this light blue, but if you're using a darker color, maybe you're crocheting with brown, a really, really good tip is take an end or just an off cut and maybe only that much and lay it over the hole you don't like and just poke the piece of yarn into that hole. It might take some coaxing to get in there because um, everything is pretty tight, um, but you will get it in and even use the back end, and it will effectively close or take the whiteness out of that hole. Um, it can be quite, uh, what's the word, demoralizing for your amigurumi piece if you've done this lovely, and then there's a big fat hole that's sitting there it just is unattractive. So that is our heart and as you can see it is a tiny bit smaller actually than the red um, but probably that's a tension issue for me I probably just pulled everything tighter because I was making the video um, but I hope you make this heart it's a fantastically gorgeous little thing let's bring in its friends and clearly I have far too many now. Uh, well, you can never have too many hearts, really. Um, but, yeah, I do hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know if you make this heart. Remember, don't panic if you're a stitch short or a stitch over. It's no big deal, especially if you're down around that two single crochet decrease mark. It's no big deal. Just move on. Um, it will not in any way hamper the look of the overall product. That is firm as. You would absolutely not want that thrown at you. Um, this is a nice soft one. All right. Thank you so much for joining me. I will see you next time on Crochet Tutorials. I do hope you have a fantastic week. Bye now.